you how y'all be man my fellow hairless minks of the blue sea it's me I'll be back this is actually a second take <laughs> you guys know I, i'm usually doing one take jay out here but uh i caught myself rambling again just reflecting over Everything that's happened right in the past 12 hours and for me, like the past 10 years of this series and just seeing where things have gone and how people have grown. People that I know in real life that I've met through, you know, the forum community or the YouTube community. Maybe not like we meet up and hang out, but, you know, you guys know we're all in our little cliques and groups like we're all part of a big group. But a lot of us are broken down just basically by who we knew first and things of that nature. Right. As far as like discords and what channels we're normally on. Like a lot of you know me from Recon's channel, which, you know, that's my guy, right? Since the old days. Like when I say the old days, I'm talking about old school Tekken days. Like when Tekken <laughs> wasn't Tekken yet, like he was always cool to me, but you know what I mean? He wasn't the force of nature that he is now. And Buddy hasn't changed, man. That guy has been, he's, and I mean that in a positive way, right? I like the scene. You guys know the same way I felt when I first started watching him till now. It's just like it's insane, you know, and even with Recon, he's blowing up now more like some of y'all don't know, like all the big the people, you know, the people who are extremely popular. He would have been one of those guys and his channel got clapped. You know, I have a couple of friends like that where it's like. Or, you know, people I know or, or know of or speak to on the regular over the years that something like that has happened to them. You know, he's one of those where God, he should be at 100K. But I feel that way about everybody. <laughs> but he definitely, that dude is awesome. And the way they try to help people in the community off screen, the stuff that people don't know about, even people like Dritz and, and especially, right? Because people like to dog him, but they don't know, like, I'm not saying I know Buddy, but I do know some of the background stuff like, you know, from five, six years ago where he's put in a lot of work off screen, you know, trying to help people build their channels and, and um, teaching them how to communicate and how to get an audience and just stuff that the regular community doesn't pay attention to. You just look at the man's views on a series about fiction <laughs> and use that as a, as a basis uh, to characterize this man. And again, nobody's perfect. But when I think about all these people we have in the community now, especially at times like with dude yesterday in recon stream, Fiji popped up and was like, yo, pull up on Brago, man. He's at 9K. And I was just like, our dude, we were just sitting there like, you got to be kidding me. Like, not that that part's not believable for someone like him, especially him. You know, I know people like the cap and all that other stuff, but a lot of you, especially five, six years ago, you know the type of stuff you used to go through, especially on Reddit and dumb stuff like that. You know, people saying he was terrible, he didn't know what he was doing, you know, and just the negative. And that man did like he was supposed to do. You know, he has his times, he's still human, and we all got breaking points. But to see that dude now to the point where he has 9K life people in a stream, it felt great, man. It was like watching somebody that, you know, you like win a championship at that point, you know, for the series to be this big. Now, I, I, some of you follow some other stuff on YouTube. So, you know, for a fact, like that's not normal. OK, like that's stock market channel numbers uh, as far as live stream is concerned. People don't. That's not normal to get those kind of numbers. And it just it's a testament to the series itself, the community. You know, we have our differences, but. Um, the past 12 hours have been awesome for me. You guys know I'm not really super sentimental, but I always have a great appreciation for people's hard work, their skill, and the amount of time that they've dedicated to something. And I spent so much time listening to this dude, you know, like even the old days where you used to just let anybody on his channel, you know, you just be in the stream just because it was a bunch of people chilling. Like you can't do that now for obvious reasons, you know. And then you have people that they just... I'm not even going to get into the negative, but the past 12 hours have been awesome, you know? So, like, shout out to the boy Fiji, another son of the son that are you, right? My boy. A different country, but he's still Shimosuke Village till he die. <laughs> 
so check him out if you don't know who he is uh for whatever reason i don't know how you wouldn't but uh i think about all the old school cats like the old days you know i'm gonna get into the chapter obviously but this stuff to me is kind of important because this is how we got here it's just like the series you know the five like seven years ago with a lot of the newer cats who were at the top that was their romance dawn you know and you, you like it's just crazy, man. I was so I was excited. So many people were getting love last night, and it's all because of this series, man. Like what it's done, what 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 its purpose is. It's goofy, right? We have all this, you know, other stuff, <laughs> but I can't really think of too many people who their lives got worse by following this series. Um, so that's just, that's all I need to know, right? But I just want to talk about that stuff a little bit. And, and shout out to the you know the, the real goat with the coat in real life, man. Recon D Goat Beard, that's my boy. Shout out to Laz. Shout out to Grand. He he was popping off last night. Stop by there. Shout out to E. You know what I'm saying? ZFB should be on today. You guys, some of y'all know how long I've been around, right? And I'm not really that kind of guy. But some of these dudes, I'm you know as far as online. Right, I've known them since, like, some of them, <laughs> like, ZFB has been around for years. He would be bigger, too. Recon and ZFB should be much bigger, uh, in my opinion. There's a lot of people, in my opinion, everybody should have, like, a <laughs> But, you know, this is still somewhat niche as far as what's popular on YouTube. So when I see stuff pop off, like, last night, where this is globally trending and all that other stuff, I, it just, it's exciting, man. And we had so much fun last night. So let's get into the chapter, man. Most of the stuff you you guys know you've been talking like I do. I didn't even sleep. I went to sleep like at seven this morning. I took a little two hour nap, ate some breakfast, and I was like, all right, I'm ready to talk. You know, I did a lot of talking last night, but I, I didn't talk to y'all. Y'all already know I'm always talking to my people. Normally, it's usually a few a few days after big chapters, but not not this time, man. Not this time. So ten forty four, warrior liberation. Like I said, a lot of this this chapter only had like three things that we really need to, to focus on, right? Um, the German cover story. They're about to get dissected. I don't know what's going on with this. And I think it's dope because it's carrying on to the fact that Big Mom was interested in German's tech. Ultimately, that was her goal. And it looks like she's about to succeed. I guess Putin didn't really do anything, which I wasn't sure if her ability could work like that. Like she has a time release ability that, that messes you up later. Uh, that's not the case. And I thought, Brule, I was like, maybe Brule and Oven are going to go see Go to Curry? Huh? You know, check in with the goat himself, the mochi man. Hey, but I guess we got to wait some cover chapters to see him. I'm actually interested in what happens to them. Not if they get saved or not, but what is, what, what's going to happen with their tech, right? Um, I don't know. But anyway, see Luffy. Well, we don't see him, but we hear him talking about how am I able to stand? I just lost. So let's, let's keep bringing that part up because people, regardless of, you know, that's the go with the code. That's my captain, right? Future Pirate King, first ballot Hall of Famer to quote JD, right? That's going to happen, right? But let's not forget. Oh, no, no, no. My man, what? One clap, Kaido, cuz. Because it's one. And you're done, son. Uh, He gave Luffy to work, this whole arc, right? He gave everybody to work. We talked about that uh, last week. Even Luffy admits, like, oh, no, I lost, right? And then we have Momo talking to Yamato about the whole situation with Luffy being Joy Boy, according to Zanisha, anyway. And then you see the Black Lightning cracking down, and you're like, oh, it's about to get real. You know, uh, it's all about execution, man. We've talked about this time and time again about Fade, you know, Todd. You, you guys know. You know the hot-button topics in this series. You know. So... The execution for me was it was always what I've been interested in, especially because I never used to read like anything outside of information. I didn't read for entertainment. So um, how writing is structured and all I don't I didn't know anything about that stuff. But I do. I always would know if I thought something was cool or, oh, wow, that was like this. But I didn't understand why it was written that way. I just, you know, resonated or whatever. But um Dude, dude, this is, you see, I'm rambling. And like I said, this is my second take. You know, I usually don't do that. But uh, I spent like 12 minutes talking about the reflections of life in YouTube and, and, and just One Piece in general. And y'all don't want to hear all that too long. But uh, Sanji wakes up. He knows it's Luffy. And we've talked about the personalization of hockey 
before where certain characters know exactly who's who, no pun intended, based on whatever hockey they're admitting, right? Uh, so, so then they, we cut the, I think it was Kid, of course, Law. You always know, I always know when Law's in a chapter. And Hero Goro, I want to say. And they were just basically trying to figure out if that was Straw Hat or not. And then you have Marco talking to Nami and Otama and Onichi. You know, he's still alive. Like, did it. <laughs> I ripped the anime, right, uh, temporarily. But in 2025, <laughs> when we get these, these episodes, <laughs> it's going to be dope, man. Because... He, we'll get into that. We cut the Mary Joe's pub. Shout out to Cole, uh, another goat, right? But he's literally been around for over a decade. And I, like, that's not even cap. That's that's crazy, man. This man spent, like, basically a third of his life already uh, just doing this. So he, that's how you know you enjoy something, man. Because I couldn't do anything for, you know, 10 days that I don't like, let alone 10 years. Um, and then we, the, it's interesting because... <laughs> The girls say, say, we sacrifice one of our best. And I think they put the, not necessarily the emphasis, but the fact that RIP, man, you already know Derby had a cypher pole guy, AKA Blue Scarf Scarfino, pull one out for your boy. You know, he's out of here. So I don't know if that's actually confirmation technically that he's dead because he, you know, but I, we might as well just assume for the time being, but we know how that goes. And, um, they, they, they asked, like, are our priorities straight? Because this may, and then uh, Mustache Girl will say was like, this this might be the better thing to do, you know, considering whatever their other option is. And I'm actually interested in what this other option is and if that's going to be talked about. Because clearly it seems like this is not going to work in the first place. So what was their emergency plan? If things went the way that they are going now, is that what we're about to see? Because technically, Derby has a Cypher Bowl guy succeeded. It just didn't matter, right? Um, and I was under the impression that the Gorsay were not aware of the abilities of what was about to happen, right? I, I just, the way they made it sound last chapter, like they didn't, had no idea. But once again, we see when characters, just because they say something on panel and it sounds cryptic or like, oh, the Gorsay don't even know about this. You know, that was our thing we were focused on. And then the very next chapter, they're just basically breaking this down as if they've always known about this. Which really makes you question the beginning of the series, right? When Luffy really started getting out there and getting his name out there, I guess they assume he just wouldn't awaken because from what we've seen, right? the percentage of characters that have awakened their abilities are not a great one. You know, supposedly devil fruits are supposed to be rare to begin with, but then the amount of people who live long enough or get that strong or crafty, whatever, however you want to word that experience, um, they never get to this level. But if I'm the Goro say, there's no way Luffy makes it out the East blue. It, it wouldn't happen. Like it just wouldn't happen. I would have Buster called Arlong park if I had to, um, if I was that worried about this, but that's just me. I'm not tired either, though. <laughs> but it is interesting that they said one of their best, meaning that there's other cipher pole that we're going to meet. That's not Rob, not necessarily Rob Lucci that are probably on the level of what you need to deal with the threats that we have now. It's just a matter of delegation of power, right? We've seen this, uh, We've seen an example of this through the Marines where they talk about we can't expose our greater resources, right? Because for all intents and purposes in the series, most of the factions are very top heavy, right? From what we see, uh, maybe the exception might be the Revolutionary Army, but we're not really sure how big they are. You know what I mean? As far as t being top heavy, the Beast Pirates is only three people. Whoa, no, 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 no. King and Queen, and I said everybody else is trash. So you can't really count them. The Big Mom Pirates are, eh, you know, you of course go to Curry. But, like, Oven was dope to me personally. But we know he's not, like, a top tier, top tier like that. And then maybe Shanks is the exception, you know, because of the way his crew is structured, where they'd rather just have a smaller crew and be, like, a, you know, close to top tier with a small amount of people. They're more of a quality over quantity group. Uh, similar to the Straw Hats, like we getting kind of deep, but we're nowhere near as deep as some of these factions uh, that we deal with, right? So I just thought that part was interesting. So Gandhi says, you know, 
No matter what he said, something to the effect that basically every attempt they've ever made to obtain the Gomu Gomu after the past 800 years, which may be implying that they actually had control of the Gomu Gomu at some point and something happened. I feel like that we're going to get more, expo- I mean, we should get ex- more exposition on what they're talking about, but out of all the things that we were talking about last night, the focus really wasn't on the Gorosei to this level, right? It was more on the other stuff for obvious reasons, but you guys know how I am when it comes to the other stuff. <laughs> and then, um, so I'm like, I wonder if they'll show in the past, right, the ways that they've tempted to acquire the Gomu Gomu no Mi, right? I, I just, I wonder if we're going to get that. Maybe even just a couple of panels of like pre, maybe not this, because eventually now that we see Luffy awaken in this whole situation with Joy Boy, if he actually is the fruit itself, right, based on the fruit itself, or he's a previous user we're probably going to see his face, like his true face. And we're probably going to see him using some of his abilities in like flashback. Because I just don't think, why would they talk about how many times, like they, how long they've been trying to capture this this fruit? Um, and what is it really possible of? And we find out, of course, later. And Sanji's dad girl will say, I think, was the one who said, uh, like it, it's been purposely evading us. And then we learned something else. This is crazy with some of these panels. Just think of the contrast of the level of information that the Gorosei spit out in this chapter compared to last chapter where they sounded like, I was like, oh, so the Gorosei don't know all. And then the very next chapter, they act like they know everything again. It's really crazy with them. (laughs) But he talks about uh, what Sanji's dad, Gorosei, was like, it's almost as if this thing is evaded. It's on purpose. And he then he says all Zoran fruits have like a will of their own, which devil fruits in general always seem like they had a will of their own. That then like even with the lore that we got through Dofi and, and others throughout the series, kind of made it seem like there's not there's part of a reason why devil fruit and personality match the person as if it's like that fruit is trying to p- find a person that matches the same frequency as them. Right? Shout out to frequency theories that we've talked about before in the series, but um. That's what they, to me, that's kind of what, and then with Zones in particular, because they're the only ones that we know so far, um, I guess the exception might be Big Mom, right, with with her crew. Zones are all based off life forms compared to other abilities that are based on elements of nature, right, with, with, with the Logias for the most part. And then they have elements of food and all these other weird stuff in the Paramecia class. But, um. It's interesting that it says that, that he said that they all Zorn fruits have a will of their own. And this one carries a god name, right? Or a name of a god. So the Gomu Gomu is a mythical zone. And that's something that people have speculated on off and on between Tiger Man and, and the Hanuman theories. And shout out, still shout out to the Resin Theory, man. I don't, like I said last week, I didn't even care if it was wrong. It still made sense. And it was, it was dope. All right. So shout out to you. I know how people are. Uh, and not, not even just in the community, but, you know, people love to tell when people like, oh, you're wrong. It's like, dude, I don't think the people who were putting these things together ever care about being wrong. It's just something to do. And it's like, it's cool. You know, so I thought it was dope. And I seen there was a disconnect about him being a mythical zone with the Hito Hito no Mi. And then, you know, people started to bring up. I'm like, yeah, well, his, he's, he's saying Goku. Right. We just don't know what the lore in mythology, some people do. I've seen the he's supposed to be akin to a story from the Caribbean, which that that's like the whole backstory of pirates to begin with, right? And Oda's actually talked about the Caribbean specifically a few times um, in SBSs and stuff like that, where he's gotten ideas, even the book that he used to use for references having to do with pirates and even like where he got Zoro's name from and stuff like that. So I would I, I wouldn't be you know, that wasn't really an idea that I ever was aware of uh, until talking to other people. It was like, oh, okay, I can see that. And he's a Hito, he don't know me. Right? Model sun god Nika. And, you know, for me, throwing out Nika is not really a big deal. I know a lot of you are getting grief over that one, boy. Good luck out there in the, <laughs> in the internet streets with that one. But, um, 
that's basically he has a power just like Sengoku. So him being a mythical zone is not really crazy. It's just the fact that he's rubber that makes it weird. And I've always I didn't I've always thought that he was just a paramecian. Like the focus on him being a paramecian was a big deal because everybody he's fought has told him his fruit is inferior. Come to find out that he got the most broken fruit in the series. That's not law. Um I still think law would probably be a problem for, for, for Luffy, just because his ability is very black beardish in a way but this is this is wild right we heard the memes last night tune first looney tunes you guys know i've been talking about looney tunes in the series forever like he literally does this all the time and i don't mean that in a bad way you can just tell what people grew up watching or doing um especially when you get older and you're like oh yeah you used to watch this i can tell like you can tell you used to write like i know he does a lot of research but you can tell especially when he brings up stuff in you know, Outside of the series, what his influences really were. And two things that I know for a fact. He watched a lot of Disney, a lot of uh, Looney Tunes. And he certainly it was into wrestling at some point. Um, just by the way he had characters talk and stuff like that. Like, oh yeah, dude, you definitely have watched some wrestling <laughs> in your days, right? And wrestling was very popular in Japan as far as like, um, even back in the day, right? The Attitude Era. Wrestlers wrestled in Japan a lot. Believe it or not, um, if you look at some of the history of wrestling, like Japan is actually one of those countries where it was popular for some time. Uh, and even now, I'm sure it's still popular. I just don't follow as much. So I don't know who's who and <laughs> what's what. And they call it the most ridiculous power in the world, which is interesting. And people are bringing up something. Um, people are really quick with this stuff. Like I know with some people it's just because they read the spoilers. So they have time to research stuff, but some people just know the series like the back of their hand and they could tell you what page, what panel, just like that. You know what I mean? If you've reread the series like 40 times, I, it's not that too, like, it's not that crazy to me. You'd be able to do that. And, um, so people were bringing up the fact that one, which I do remember when Oda talked about how was Luffy going to beat Kaido because punching him wasn't going to make any sense. And I had kind of like not really thought about that as much because it didn't seem to be a factor. But it is what y'all been knowing. I've been saying the entire arc that he wasn't just going to whoop Kaido. It just wasn't going to happen. Like even with power ups, like he was going to get Ichigo. Like, oh, you got a new Bankai, you ha, that's cool. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, nice to see you. You know what I mean? But, um, Something else that we always talk about, right, with Double Fruit Powers is imagination. So I'm glad that this is getting the focus, the imagination part, and what substance you are. I've literally done videos over this over the years. like, And it makes my video even more ironic, right? The most useless Devil Fruit. I literally called the Gomu Gomu that. Part of that was, I, it like, because I thought it would be useless. I thought it would be more useless than Luffy, right? Luffy is the reason why his fruit is busted. And even with these reveals, he still kind of is because the focus is your imagination. He's been copying moves the whole time. Like people were talking about the pinwheel thing and UFO and he has been like that. So him using Toon Force, shout out to Pegasus, <laughs> is kind of wild, but it makes sense because through conventional means, he has no business being able to be, oh, do, 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 do. He just, he ain't got no business beating him. And he was right. He was like, okay, um, resin theory? Eh, who decided that? Escanor? You know, like I said before, it was still a clean theory. But the fact that he's still rubber doesn't change anything for me. The same way if he would have been resin, this doesn't change anything for me. That's the way that he's a mythical zone now does not change anything for me. I'm actually more excited to find out about the real lore, real life lore, what Joy Way is based on um, because of that. And... How is he going to fight in the series later? And how is this going to affect him in the negative aspect? Because you do see this thing where one, you know, he got the, 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 the his heartbeat rhythm itself, right? I'm not, I don't need to automatopee of that, right? We all know it by now. Uh, and the laughing. And it was something I brought up when he talked about, when Who's Who talked about um, the sun God saving people. I was wondering if there was a negative in, in, implications, like, all these people still died or something like that. They just died laughing because of his ability or whatever he does. You know, I thought it was something like that. Kind of like, uh, you know, there's been episodes or movies where the Joker does something similar with gas bombs. And you think about how smile works and, and things of that nature, the uncontrollable laughing. And I've seen people tie this together lately, especially last night with smile fruits, babe. And 
like maybe possibly based off of the Gomu Gomu at this point. Um, because Luffy cannot control the laughing. He's been laughing the whole time. We've never really seen him do that in a fight. Like, he'll laugh during a fight, but not like this. So there, there has to be... If the previous user still died, <laughs> when, in, when you have an ability like Laws that's like based on your imagination, technically, you'd probably be able to... Ma- I said this last night, you know, to recon. I'm like, yeah, technically, you might be able to imagine yourself being immortal and you just wouldn't die. Technically. Depending on how great your imagination is, like... Um, and then with will and whatnot, like you should just be able to will your existence indefinitely. And so it's like, I wonder what the implications on, on that's going to be for, uh, instant messenger Samba, because clearly, uh, instant messenger Samba and Z got some other weird stuff going on. That's going to be insane later on in the series. So when he did and then also the Gorsuch called him like the, um, just like the chapter title war of limit, uh, liberation, right? That, this the Gomagoni is basically the embodiment of that. So that means whoever the fruit picks in a way, they also embody those same qualities. Like we talked about frequency matching. That's kind of what you're doing with devil fruits and, and people, right? And that awakening basically makes him stronger, which we already knew that. But to be able to do stuff that he has no business doing, similar to law, right? Like it's more magic based, uh like I talked about with Sengoku, we don't really know how strong he is, but we we have a pretty good idea of where he's at. And the Buddha Buddha fruit look filthy at Marine Ford, even with him not really doing nothing and being slightly old. Because uh, I consider in, in One Piece, old is probably really like 70. You know what I mean? 50s cats are still in their prime in this series. Like 50 is still your prime on some, you know, advanced LeBron, Tom Brady type stuff. So it's not that crazy to me, but, uh, I don't know, man. I I'm, I'm excited though. And I'm, of course I got to talk about or Hoji at least a little bit, right? Cause the, the future wife of Shimosuke village leader, my man, Zoro, right? Is a woman out here bossing up on her or Hoji, man. You know, you out here, well, you always lying. I mean, technically, in a way, Orochi is not lying about Kaido using him. The other stuff he's lying about. So it's like, you know, good lies are based off half-truths. But he already's not hearing that, man. Her people's been enslaved. You know, what happened to our legend? Like, what she was saying to him, that's going to be raw in the anime. That's going to be raw. The two characters that I want to hear, like, speeches from... When it comes to the anime and how they do the tone and the music and all that, Yamato and Hiyori. Like, chapters like these, you know, I wasn't a big art person. Not, like, in a negative aspect. I just wasn't really aware of it. But when I see moments written like this, I'm like, oh, this is, this, this is, this is like, movie-level real-life type stuff as far as, um, you know, people being oppressed and, and what everything they went through. Right? You watch your pops boiled alive. Like, the Hour of Legend is some crazy, crazy stuff. To the point it will inspire your own enemy's daughter. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's some heavy stuff. And until Odin died in the boiling order, uh, oil, I actually never really paid attention to how much he was smiling the entire flashback. Like, when he was dancing. I did not really think of it on that level. And it gave me a greater... Like, I probably will reread the entirety of Wano this weekend. Uh, or at least Sunday. <laughs> Maybe not Saturday. But Sunday. Uh more than likely, but um, that that to me was pretty cool. And or Hochi bringing up revenge being a, like old ideology, I'm like, oh, that's kind of like a contrast to what Usopp been talking about samurai culture and stuff like that. And then the Cosmo shows up and, and, and scorches him. I don't know why it did that. I'm not really sure because the last time we seen the Cosmo, it was in the bubble or near the. I still iffy on that panel, but the bubble with Big Mom and the Cosmo. We hadn't seen it since then. So I don't know why it's going after Orochi now. That's kind of odd to me. And he already doesn't seem that surprised that the Kazumbo or AKA slash Kondro attacked him anyway. So does this have something to do with what Ryza was talking about? We're like, I don't know. I'm not really sure because why would the Cosmo burn the castle in the first place if they were, if 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 Kondra was going to help them anyway in the end? It's just really weird. And I liked what she said. You know, she brings up just like um previous characters have that dawn will come. Like it, it, you ain't got no way around this, homie. 
The dawn will come. We're not going to keep living like this. I promise you that. You know, some stuff like that. And um, I liked what she said. The Kozuki clan always keeps his promises. That's a hard bar right there. You know, and then we get to Luffy, of course, and he's on Toon Force, man. Eyes popping out of his head. I heard the Popeye memes and all that. Dude, this, this part, even with power scaling, to me, this part is like why I like the fighting in the series. Obviously, it's not always super detailed, like Hunter Hunter or something crazy like that. But I like stuff like this because it was affecting Kaido. And that was something I didn't, I won't say I didn't hear people, yeah, because it wasn't the main focus, but nobody was seeing that his ability was affecting Kaido. Because his eyes started to pop out of his head when he was swinging around and his tongue was sticking out. And he was making these goofy faces. And Kaido's kind of goofy on his own, but it's only been like during the drunk time. He's been sober for a while. So when Luffy was swinging around and I seen his face like on some straight Looney Tunes stuff like we've been talking about. I'm like, his ability is affecting Kaido too, to a degree. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that kind of, I thought that was kind of dope. And like we've been talking about, Luffy using all forms of hockey simultaneously because the scrubs got knocked out before. Now, this him with him. And this is something I have talked about even a couple of years ago. Right. His awakening makes it so he does not have to use gears. That will make his hockey way more efficient just by itself, because it just seems like he might not have to use hockey at all to use gear fourth type moves. So that's what I'm interested in. And I'm also interested in what is Awakened Snake Man going to look like? You know what I mean? Because I feel like, I still feel like that real King Kong gun is coming. You know, I just, that's just me. And then like what? Kaido used Boro Breath, which, you know, <laughs> everybody's gotten past Boro Breath at this point. But Luffy pulls up the ground. Straight wildly, kind of like, dude, this 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 fruit should be called the Acme Acme No Me. Like, <laughs> that's what it really is. And his, he bounces it back, like on some, you know, uh, mirror coat. But we know he turned the ground to rubber, but at the same time, it can bounce away fire. So this is going to be really wacky. Therefore, the drawbacks must be insane. Again, this might tie into why Luffy dies early in the series, as far as his age is concerned. Like, he might finish his goals, but he might die early over this fruit ability because it might not be made for people to live long to have this ability. Maybe it only pops up in short times of true oppression to, to you know, pick its person that's going to try to balance the world out and, and, or something of that nature, right? Because, like I said, he rubberized the ground and he bounced fire back. That's wild, right? And his eyes is popping out. And I like what Kaido said, finally. I apologize for what the idiot did earlier. And something we talked about. He didn't do his victory cry. Because he he knew he won, but it didn't feel like a win. He was just like, oh. That's why he was so salty and ready to just murk everybody. <laughs> and Luffy's like, don't sweat it. We about to get this working, bro. Round 13, let's go. I can't wait, man. I know Golden Week is either this week or next week, but man, I just give me one more chapter. Just one. Peace, y'all.